Welcome back to hell, everyone. It's Deep Dive Zone, a Sonic review series for fans of all shapes and sizes. And guys, I legitimately had a nightmare last night where I forgot we were supposed to talk about Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal today, and I woke up upset that I had to try and finish that entire crummy game in a couple hours. Man, that's... no, that's that's next level nightmare material. Yeah, damn. It, it it was genuinely a surreal moment. I've had a couple moments like that recently where I wake up from dreams forgetting that, no, that's not actually happening. Interesting. Well, we may not be covering that mess, but we have more, different messes to cover instead. That's true. Indeed. Tonight, we have one of the most baffling Sonic comics ever created. We are talking about the Archie Sonic the Hedgehog and Image Comics Production Crossover Special, Sonic Super Special, number seven. Um. I don't know a thing about Image Comics. I was vaguely aware of Spawn, and that's about it. Yeah, I think that's probably the case for all three of us. I only knew of Spawn from their appearance as a Spawn mower. Oh. Fair enough. Spawn's most important appearance, if you, if you really think about it. True, true. <laughs> yeah, well, um... <laughs> no, they, they, I, just, I don't have anything to say, just because I am so unfamiliar with these properties. It's like, I'm not even a Marvel or DC guy, but I at least know who Batman is. Uh, in oh, this sure. case, you know, it's like, I, I just, I assume they just thought that a, a partnership might be possible, but I can tell how unfitting so many of these properties are for Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Honestly, uh, as much of a mess as crossovers often are, they're always fun. Uh, I don't know anything about Image Comics, but I'm like, oh, crossover? Sure, should be interesting. Oh, oh yeah, of course. It's always going to be interesting in some way, but calling this a mess might be giving you too much credit. This thing is utterly unhinged. You know, we talked about yeah. um, Sonic 56 and how, like, oh, you know, we called it incomprehensible, but that was a, a question of visual presentation. You know, right. it, was, it was the layouts. And the... I don't mean to call the art in this special, like, amazing, but it's, like, it's mostly readable. Um, it's, it's the writing that is all over the place. Yeah! I... <laughs> The, yeah, this is Parallel Paradigm, written, of course, by Ken Penders, and drawn by co-founder of Image Comics, Jim Valentino. When the Master Emerald is stolen by a malicious force, Sonic and company are transported to an alternate dimension where they interact with various Image Comics characters or something. Why the fuck did I have to read this bullshit? I actually wrote that in my summary. I mean, that's a fair enough description, honestly, because beyond that, the plot's completely incomprehensible. I like, I didn't comment on the cover at all, but you mentioned the Master Emerald as, as a part of this. And throughout, you can see on the cover here, Mogul is just kind of there. Like, I'm not sure if he's conscious, but I like to think that he's just watching all this nonsense. Oh man, I didn't even notice that. That's great. The, especially his face on the cover just looks like he he's just annoyed he has to be involved in all of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think... I, I think the right approach to this is to consume this comic sort of like devouring a whale, uh, which is to say, piece by piece. We start off... All right. In medias res, however you say that, I actually don't know, uh, with this sci-fi girl called Particle talking to Mulder and Scully? Yeah, Mulder and Scully. Yep. Okay, well, I'm they call... It's not Mulder and Scully, it's Skulder and uh, uh, Mully, or whatever. Yeah, this is one of the funniest things immediately right off the bat, is that The X-Files is a recurring theme in this comic. Image Comics never published anything with The X-Files in it. Yeah, it would have at least made sense if Image Comics had The X-Files license at some point in the 90s, but they didn't. Yeah. This so Penders is... just put them in there for no fucking reason. This is Penders' character Particle, who is not in any previously existing Image comic, talking with Skulder and Mully lookalikes, who are also Penders' original characters, technically. I guess, um, yeah. About traveling to Sonic's dimension? Oh my god. Uh, but then she gets the jump on them pretty easily, which kind of annoys me. 
Yeah, it's it's just a really weird sequence, to be honest. It's like Sonic and Friends, I guess they're just walking through Mobotropolis or something. Um, and Jim Valentino's art for Sonic and Friends is a little weird looking. It's like the background yeah. is really good, and he can obviously draw humans, which I'd hope so. Oh, yeah. Um, no, but, but you're, you're right. The Sonic characters, they, they look like ever so slightly kind of uncanny valley. Yeah. But so they, they see this girl, and they, they immediately recognize her uh, as a human and suspect her for that. But she just kind of flashbangs them all and then, like, magically travels to Angel Island? Yeah. I also have to point out that Antoine alludes to something. She's like, or he's like, oh, she's an overlander um, and a female one at that. Oh wow, there's some treachery there, and then Ant and then Bunny gets angry, and he's like, "Oh, I'm talking about a bad experience I had." And it's like, "Oh, there's an untold story." Ooh. In the editor's note, um, until proven otherwise, I'm just gonna assume he's talking about the Rebecca episode from Side AM. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have no idea if that ever gets followed up on. That sounds like something them trying hmm. to plant a seed, but I don't think that I remember anything like that happening. It's just Antoine being misogynistic, I guess. Oof. Minus one from the Chad Twan scale, I guess. All right. Yeah, damn. So, Particle is is on Angel Island. She makes a joke about the zoot shoot to the the Chaos Chamber being camp, which is like, you fucking wrote this, Ken. What are you talking about? Um. Now, but now we're getting serious from the days of the zoot shoot. Which I also think was also trying to take itself way too seriously. Yeah, so she ends up in the Chaos Chamber. She sees the the Master Emerald with Mogul in it. And she sees Knuckles, and then also knocks him out too. Yeah, so the Freedom Fighters, I, I'm annoyed by that. But I'm really annoyed by Knuckles, because he's actually on his guard like he's supposed to be. Right. But he just lets his guard down because the plot demands it. Here's the thing. Penders <laughs> wanted you to think that this new character is the coolest girl in the world, so his best idea for that was for her to beat up all of the other characters. Or, not even beat up, but incapacitate. She's she's right. even like, oh, I don't want to hurt you. Like, I have to do this. So she doesn't actually come off as super cool. She comes off as like, you know, um, what am I saying? If she doesn't want to do this, she should find a better way, but no. You could just ask for help. Yeah. No, but if, if we do that, then there's no conflict in the episode. <sighs> what are you talking about? We have we have enough con conflict with with Wolf Scolder and Lana Mully here. Oh boy. Yeah. I, I, I I'm not sure I have anything to to say about this other than it's just so stupid. Um. They they track, yeah. P Particle knocks knocks fake uh, Mulder out, and escapes, and uh, they they basically track her to some kid, who who witnessed Sonic and company meeting Spawn in an alleyway. Some kid who has an Archie shirt. I was just about to just, say that they just have to do that. I well, I, gotta, I think gotta remind us what comic. This was maybe part of. Was, would this be considered? Was this released by Archie or by Image, or technically by both? It was by Archie because it's counted as an okay. Archie Sonic. What What okay. I like about the Archie shirt actually is that the expression changes from the first panel to the uh, the next page, where he looks slightly more concerned when uh, the FBI <laughs> comes to talk to him. I didn't even notice that. That's actually a funny touch. Yeah, and. You know, of course, they, they sell the, the Sonic and Spawn crossover on the cover. In the actual story, it's kind of just a big joke, where it's like, oh, they're all in an alleyway, and he looks scary, and they just, they ask him for directions, and he says no, and then they leave. Yeah, that's his entire role in the story. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> uh. And, uh, well, basically, when, when this guy... Uh, this teenager shows up. I thought it was going to be like a sequel to Sonic Live, where they just recruit some random kid to help them. 
but it's not. Instead, this guy is apparently a superhero called Shadowhawk, which that's that's probably a real guy. So I hate to burst your bubble, but this is in fact a sequel to Sonic Live because he recognizes Sonic and the Freedom Fighters. He's like, oh wow, guys. I have played the games and watched the Saturday morning cartoon. Way cool. So this is, in fact, the same real world, in quotes, as was in Sonic Live, or at least another universe that also has Sonic's game. I'm going to assume it's the same one because that makes it less confusing and yet worse. So does that mean that Ken Penders is, like, ostensibly implying that his son and niece are Image Comics characters? Yes. (laughs) I'd I'd believe it. (laughs) Uh, well, that is well. Image Comics is 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 the real world. That's that's what I'm getting from this. I mean, yeah, Spawn actually exists. I thought <laughs> you guys knew that. It's true. I did see him one time when I was strolling through a uh, an anime convention. You know, I think I saw one. Uh, I think I saw Spawn at a Komori Con a couple of years ago. Canon. <laughs> so uh, I guess we kind of skipped over this. Uh, but, um, there's a brief flashback where it shows, like, how the Freedom Fighters came to the Image Comics universe, and they just took the Universal Highway, of course, um, because you can do that to entire different continuities that are not related to Sonic at all, apparently. I mean, it is still a multiverse, so, in theory, any Universal, um, uh, what, continuity, any continuity would exist within the multiverse, well, some stories have multiverses, but you still don't expect them to be able to cross over. Oh well, yeah, completely other. Oh no, um, no, I, I that work. yeah, that is true. That is that is true and stupid. I'm just why saying, isn't Goku in Spider Verse? <laughs> Damn, yeah. That's thank you for illustrating my point. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> also, uh, in that same flashback, there's an editor's note that like explains who Robotnik is. Because Rotor's like, oh, uh, this thing was from Robotnik's junk. Which is funny, because on the one hand, it's like, wow, have we really been so far from uh, Robotnik's defeat that they think they have to explain who, like, the main villain of the series is to the readers? But then I realize it's actually just an advertisement for the reprint of Endgame. Okay, that's uh, fair, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that, um, you know, oh, well, maybe it's to inform, you know, people who are here from Image rather than from Archie Sonic. But if you're if you're reading a Sonic crossover and you don't even know who Robotnik is, all that proves is how ill-fitting this is. Mm. Like, they honest? don't have to they don't have to explain who Dr. Wily is in the Mega Man crossover. He's the bad guy. You get it. Right. Well, and to be honest, I don't think many image readers are going to be at either at the time or people going and reading through images um, bibliography now are going to be reading this. I would be fascinated to hear what actual uh, fans of, of these properties think of this comic. Yeah. They probably don't like it very much because the image characters are completely flat and two-dimensional in how they're used here. They they kind of just show up to say that they showed up. Yeah, we haven't gotten there, but that is the extent of pretty much all the image characters' involvement. Yeah, yeah more or less. Uh, before that, though, uh, right as uh, Shadowhawk decides to put on his hel- go and be an actual hero, Sally gives him this weird look. Yes, everybody reposts this panel of <laughs> Sally going, can you help us? And then they, they share this really weird, like, ex- exchange of expressions. It's really kind of uncomfortable, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I... <laughs> it's supposed to be like a gag, but it's so unexpected. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No words. I have no words. <laughs> yeah. So they travel with Shadow Hawk to a train station, and uh, Savage Dragon is there, who is, I-, I guess, like a crooked cop and just opens fire on them with twin Uzis. Okay, yeah, what the heck? I mean, I know it's a comic, but what the heck? 
So I, I honestly don't know who in the image characters who's supposed to be bad guys and good guys. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think Savage Dragon is like sort of a morally ambiguous hero type, kind of an anti-hero type, like like Wikipedia a lesser judge dread superhero. Well, he may still list it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess. Uh, well, he's yeah. It says he's a superhero police officer. So anyway, but yeah, I. You know, just your average cop, I guess. <laughs> I like how the editors have our backs, and it talks about how uh, both... I already forgot the name. Whatever, the main hero guy and Savage Dragon have met before. In <laughs> Like we're getting... We're still getting the stupid ar uh, uh, editor's notes, despite this being from a completely different... Well, I guess this was still released by Archie. Uh, well, these, these crossovers are dumb. Yeah, I I can't even tell what's happening after a certain point. Like their car bike transforms, and then some more dudes show up. Like like Union. Yeah, I think the car like malfunctions or something. I think is the idea. Um, yeah, and then they're like, "Oh, we'll just take you there a different way" or something. Yes, so they, they take the train and they track the Chaos Energy, or something, to this Cyber General Zod guy? Cyber General Zod guy that wants to pull a river song, I guess, because he's like, ah, I already know all of you from the future. Yes, so we, we actually do need to talk about this guy. Do they ever say what his name is in this comic? I think they do, but I'm going to be honest, I don't remember it. I don't think so, it is. I had to look it up. Maybe this they guy, don't. This guy is Dr. Ian Droid, an original Penders character that was oh going boy. to be the antagonist of an original Penders and Image Comics collaboration series called The Lost One. Lost Ones, sorry, plural. That would have starred Particle, the, the girl that we've been following this whole time. But also, one of Pender's original plans for this comic was for Dr. Droid here to become the true final villain of the series whom Knuckles would have to defeat while he pilots the giant robot from Sonic Live 25 years in the future. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, so really that's like... why he already knows who they are. Uh, that didn't happen, though. That doesn't explain it, actually. Or you, there's something that happened out of order, too, though. You didn't explain how that works. N none of it works. It doesn't work. Oh, okay. It, it That explains it because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, standard. Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, uh... I love it when writers are, like, embittered that they didn't get to write their story, so they just shove it in a different story. Yeah, because The yeah. Lost Ones ended after one issue. If I can find it online, we'll read it, but I, I, I have not found it yet. I mean, I'm willing to. <laughs> so if it's only one issue, I mean, I guess that's a yeah. small price to pay for... For, con for potential contest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna. Uh, it's not gonna help. I don't think. I I already figured that to be honest. So I guess somehow in the grand plan, Penders would have explained how Doctor Droid just has shadow SWAT bots for some reason. Um. Yeah. Because I mean, as you do, no, no explanation for that. Uh. But he he does manage to. To beat the Sonic gang, I guess, and he's got the Emerald. Uh, and now Pixel, or whatever the fuck her name is, is gonna have to be the one to fucking fix everything. Yeah, he, he throws her in a jail cell or whatever, and you can see, like, shadows of other pop culture characters. You can see Spider-Man and Batman shadows in the uh, other cells. Um, huh. But in the one she gets thrown in, I think that might even be a Popeye shadow there. Um, I think it is Popeye. But in the in the other cell she gets thrown in is her sister Carrie, which is is funny to me because you have Pixel 
no, Particle, <laughs> and and Carrie, which is like a normal name. Um, but that's I guess a bit a bigger Penders issue. Um, also, I don't even know like if it's the, an issue. Maybe you can play also, that. Oh, uh, I think Carrie is Particle's actual name because her sister's name is Anita. Oh, I fucked that up. You're right. <laughs> oh, so their weird name is like a code name or something. Yeah, it's like superhero name. Like you know, Batman's actual name isn't Batman. Oh, you know, I didn't actually know she was supposed to be a superhero. I thought that. Oh, I, I mean, know she I, is. That's a. I guess she is technically a. I. Hmm. Well, uh, that was a clusterfuck of an exchange. Anyway, um, they get uh, broken out of jail by the Max. And Velocity. And I, again, I don't know anything about these characters. I I do actually kind of like Max's introduction though. They're just hiding in a cardboard box and they're they're whining about feeling so broken up, wanting to go home. <laughs> Very weird. Um. So, I I'm still trying to remember what the fuck is going on. Doctor Droid. It, Shoots the Master Emerald with a thingy, which recreates reality. Yes, because uh, it is a requirement for many of Pender's villains to have ridiculous powers, the ability to rewrite entire realities, apparently, uh, and yet they lose anyway, quite quite easily. Um, but the main comment I have here is he talks about the. Uh, version that looks a lot like Robotropolis as 33rd century post-apocalyptic style of architecture. Now, uh, if we're saying this universe is the same universe as Sonic Live and our real world in quotes, All and right. he's talking about this as the future, does this mean that this universe is actually in the past and the Image Comics universe, Sonic Live, our world, is all the past uh, for Sonic's world? Um, I don't sure. know. It doesn't make much sense. I don't know if it's trying to imply that he retroactively created Robotropolis and Robotnik. It, I, I, I don't think it's meant to say that all of this is happening in the past before Earth got blown to shit. I, I don't think. Um, because, spoiler warnings, you know, we've been, we've been implying it for, like, the past several many, however many comic book episodes, Mobius is Earth many, many centuries post-apocalypse, that, that's right. just confirmed at this point. We don't really know what happened, but... It's pretty obvious. Well, he calls it the future, and not, like, another reality, which would... I think that would be a more important descriptor than the time period. I mean, yeah, but you're, you're but not he wrong. says that after teleporting them to some place with a bunch of people, and another Archie actually is in the background there. Um, so I don't know if the universe that they're in that he transforms into that is the Image Comics world, or if it's the ostensible real world, or you know both, as I choose to believe it. Um, okay, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not exactly clear, but I think the more confusing the theories, the more likely they are to be correct. Okay, when I say the ostensible <laughs> real world, I just mean the Sonic Universe version of the human world. I don't mean the image human world. Oh, Fuck, so I hate this! Now, now we have to differentiate three different real worlds, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> In any case, uh, we have no idea what's happening at this point. But Knuckles sure does, and he channels the power of his dad and screams so loud that the Master Emerald turns everything back to normal. Yeah, I thought you were talking about this comic, and you're talking about Knuckles has to take down Dr. Droid, because that's, that's what he does. He just creates a blast that just fixes everything, because convenience. No, I'm, I'm talking about Penders' sort of used, sort of unused plans for Knuckles 20 years in the future. Don't worry about it, we'll... It sucks. We'll get to it. It'll be great. It's amazing and horrible. Um, Good. So, that happens. All of the Sonic characters are gone. Every quote-unquote real image person is just whatever. They just leave. Um, and, and, and Mulder and Scully yeah. are like, you know, what the hell was that? I don't know. We'll keep searching for answers or something. I don't know. 
Oh yeah, we forgot to mention that uh, Angel Island fell out of the sky. Did That's because it doesn't matter. It? No, it doesn't matter, but that does beg the question, what the fuck happened to Echidnopolis when it was being flooded? Uh, it'll be alright. It'll be fine when it happens in Sonic The, the blast too. that he created fixed everything. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, clearly it did, but, you know, I, was, uh, I only bring that up because that was one of my notes I forgot to bring up. Yes, so we we finally end, sort of, on Sally lamenting that Sonic and Tails have left and, and how sad that is. So it's really weird because all of the Freedom Fighters are in this issue, but technically the entire issue takes place in flashbacks since Sonic and Tails have left at this point. Yeah, placing this one continuity-wise is confusing. Yeah, that's why we have seven coming before five in the Super Specials, but... Um, yeah, this... I have no idea. It, it's it's dedicated to Chris Carter at the end. Um, Ooh, spicy. Dedicated to the man who created the X-Files. That's, uh... Just, that is so stupid. What the hell? Like, why? Just write your own comic, dude. Keep it out of... I don't get it. I do not get it. Yeah, so at least, you know, we talk, we were talking about Sonic Live initially, because, like, you know, that's incomprehensible for its own reasons. But the plot isn't hard to follow. And, you know, maybe the plot of this isn't too hard to follow if you're just kind of... Just... Gl not glancing, but, like... You're just kind of loosely following it, but the moment you start following it more, you, you start actually trying to pay attention because you know you have to take notes for a for a podcast. It just completely falls apart. Well, there are too many offhanded remarks that confuse everything. Yeah. Even if yeah, it's fairly simple, and it's just kind of your typical crossover. Everyone comes together and beats this one bad dude, and they win. Yay. Yay. I, I wouldn't say it is. I mean, okay. It is your typical crossover in the scenes where it's the Sonic characters and the Image characters, but it's not your typical crossover as a whole because it's also Pender's just shoving his X-Files nerdiness in there and also trying to write a stealth pilot for his own Image comic series. I was saying, at, on a, at a surface level, like Bruce was, was saying. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. If if you look at it any deeper than that, it, right? As he said, it falls apart. What the heck is yeah. going on? Yeah, once you have to start actually reading, reading it because you know you're taking notes for a podcast or something. It's like, well, shit. None of this makes sense. We're gonna we're gonna get to like the second Capcom crossover in the the later Archie comics, and there's just gonna randomly be like characters from Drogune in there just because Ian Flynn wanted to plug his own webcomic. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I will say, we don't have the Lost Ones comic book right now. We do have the live-action trailer for the prospective Lost Ones TV series, though. I'm sorry, and we do? It has some Neil Breen-level acting and special effects. I'm glad you be... brought this up to us, you know, before the podcast. We, we could do a, a live reaction to it. It's very funny. All right. Sure. So that is the Image Comic Special, everybody. I, I, I God don't know. All. God help us all. Actually, I guess it's already over. God already helped us. Thank you, God. You Thank you for saving out. us. Thank you. What is most hilarious about all that is that by comparison, Sonic Number Fifty Nine, featuring the return of Al and Cal. It's going to be completely understandable. Ironically, yes. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be tough to make something more confusing than what we just read. You know, even ignoring the fact that there's no reason Alan Cal should have been back in the first place. But whatever. It's a bold move, and I respect it. It is a bold move. I don't know if I respect it, though. Here's my question. They're playing a Sega Saturn Sonic game on the cover? What game do you suppose that is? They got Sonic Extreme. <laughs> I think it might be Sonic R? Uh, oh wait, there's an actual cover. I was just looking at the disc. Um, yeah. I assume, I think it is Sonic R's cover. 
I see I'm, another I'm Sega Saturn game case and what looks like a Sonic Team logo there. So what's that game? That's Sonic Extreme. Oh, I know Sonic Extreme wasn't being made by Sega Team or Sonic Team. I guess we don't see anything. So that could be Sonic Team's logo, but the game is Knights. Oh, fair enough. All right, this is this is silly. Uh, anyway, the story here is opposites detract. Written by Mike Gallagher and drawn by Art Mawinney, Sonic and Tails find themselves in the domain of Horizont Al and Vertical, who have transformed into mechanized demigods obsessed with battle. They transform Sonic and Tails into their warriors and watch them fight for sport. They do actually call them mechanized demigods, by the way. That's yeah, they do. Summary. That's that's actually yeah. how they're described. Um. Anyway, yeah, I, uh, I like how on the first page here it says Sonic and Tails in opposite seat track. Like, they're a real duo on a, on a, on yeah. a mission together. Hell yeah. It's been a while since we've seen the Tails logo. This kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Casablanca comic, just in that it's Sonic, you know, running around oh. Who Cares Town and then getting sucked into a random dimensional rift. It, yeah, it very much is the same formula uh the ultimate and i later wreck things so we can make weird stories now um the difference uh though is that it does have some basis on uh past stories and isn't completely um unrelated to everything but it is such a wide departure uh from these two characters horizontal and vertical uh that it might as well be yeah they They've become one very long and the other very flat, and uh, they're like, oh, you know, that we, we're immortals, so we've just been beating the shit out of each other, but now there's mortals here, this will be way more fun. Murder's always more fun when the person actually dies. Uh, not I sure I agree with that. <laughs> I love how they open up with, like, uh, having them serve as our pawns would be amusing, and then uh, Vertic Vertical is just like, amusement is a concept I barely even remember. Like, they're playing them up so seriously. So it hasn't even been edgy. a year. Actually, I guess I don't know how long it's been in this universe, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they... They're like, oh, you know, you'll have this one represent me and the other one represent you. And uh, Sonic and Tails get some weird armor to fight. Yeah, they, I'm sorry. They do talk about, uh, like, the backstory of these two right. a little bit. They go into that, and it's it's just it's so over the top and edgy, but I, I kind of like it for that reason. Because it talks about how, you know, oh, it was all fun and games until the Ultimate Annihilator came, and it, like, ripped them apart and devolved them into protoplasmic beings, and then they re-evolved into these creatures, and, like, great, yes, good job. Uh, I didn't see that coming. Wow, yeah, I completely forgot fair. there was even a backstory page. I just skipped yeah, over it. There's, yeah, there's an entire plot there. Or I, backstory, whatever. I like to think that this is allegorical to how the Sonic comic got way more serious and Michael Gallagher was like, Shit! How am I gonna make this work? I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I applaud him for what he tried to do, I guess. Um, but yes, uh, we, we get Tails and, and Sonic fighting in metal armor, and again, they're just so melodramatic here, um, what is it? It's like, oh yeah, Sonic says to Tails, prepare to be permanently horizontal in your casket. Ah. Oh. oh my god, it's so horribly edgy. What I do like is that there is this bit where, like... Sonic tries to, to give a big speech about the power of friendship, and then they just kind of say, fuck that, and keep fighting. That is the perfect cherry on top of this, like, dissolved cake. Um, yeah, it's just like, you expect it to have a happy end for these two, and then they're just like, no, and they just, like, blow... I don't know if they actually blow to the dimension apart, but it blasts Sonic and Tails out either way. It's fine. That way we never have to come back here. Uh, well, hmm. Yes. Uh, keep, keep those Hey, thoughts. hey. Hey, we never come back here. 
keep yes yeah i mean you're right that is that is correct but it, you are being a little deceptive in the way you say that uh i swear well, but i'm God, also i have to deal with alan cal again bruce I, I i let me let me give you a guarantee you're not gonna mind if when we when we technically see these guys again all right but yeah uh kind of just craziness and um i don't know i I, I just I just like how they just took a past concept because any any continuity is good continuity in my book. Yeah, uh, fair and enough. then just twisted it up in such a bizarre way. Um, you know, weirdness is always very entertaining. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, for a sort of pointless adventure, I think it it ranks higher than the other ones at least. I mean, yeah, I it's not bad. It's just like. I don't. I, I guess I'm of the mind that I don't feel like any continuity is good continuity. Like, which just doesn't feel like it matters. Exactly. But yeah, um, sure. Why not? Well, we do have a second story in this issue, which is called "The People's Princess." Yeah, speaking uh, of the logos, we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, so. Sally's is not as cool as Sonic and Tails and Knuckles, but oh, no, it isn't. But we haven't seen it in a while. Written by Penders and drawn by Gallen, uh, Sally goes skydiving with some friends. That's it. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah, that is basically it. What is the group even doing? Like, they're on a mission or something, but it's not clear at all what they're doing. They just, just go a... there, and then they just have, like, dinner with the farm person, and yeah. Well, and it's also a completely random collection of characters, you have Sally, Hershey, Rotor, Lupe, Hamlin, and some horse guy? Like, it's not a team that we're familiar with. It's just kind of, we, we threw some darts at a list of characters. You know, I refuse to believe that they're in, on some kind of mission. I, this, this just has to be for fun. Well, I... Sally does say that, you know, floating in the air with not a care in the world... I, I don't even. Do I don't know though. what they're doing. I have to assume it's just recreational, or maybe it's training. I don't know. I have no idea. It's probably training. That makes the most sense, actually. Yeah. Um. Oh god, I forgot they spelled cool the cool. fucking stupid <laughs> mid two thousands way. Mid '90s way of this kind, of, yeah. That's um, true. I mean, yeah, I wasn't alive in the mid '90s, so therefore it's the mid 2000s way. Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah no. I, the only the only like mildly plot relevant thing we get from this, and we don't get any character relevant shit. It's literally just wow, cool. Okay, bye. Uh, the only plot relevant thing we get is that the king wants to have a stern chat with his daughter. <laughs> That's it. I do at least yeah. like the exchange from the random farm person where they're like, wow, I've never met a real princess before. What's it like? And so he's like, good question. I'll have to get back to you on that one. I mean, that's fair enough. She doesn't know what it's like to be a real princess. She hasn't had a chance she to. Really, yeah, yeah, she really doesn't. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, so, but the, uh, yes, they just throw a bit of arc at the end. I, I, I continue to not appreciate Pender's style of ongoing stories that with the self-contained stories aren't even self-contained and are not interesting on their own. Whatever Max wanted to talk about, we could have put it in this story instead of whatever that is. It would have made it more, make more sense. Although, let's be honest, I don't know if whatever he wants to talk about is going to be that interesting either. <laughs> oh, well, Ooh, hmm. we'll get there. Yeah, uh... For now, though, let's move on to Sonic number 60, and yep, that's Monkey Con on the cover. Cool. Yeah, Mon Monkey Con. Woo. Yeah. Uh, okay, but I guess I guess I would be hypocritical to, to not be like, okay, cool, I'm glad they brought back Monkey Con. Now he's slightly more relevant. That is true. Yeah, but, like, the first story just did not leave much of an impression, and... This one is more relevant and important, but not by much. Um, it is Arsenal of the Iron King, written and drawn by Frank Strom, because he always does his characters in an art and story. 
In their search for Ixus Nagus, Sonic and Tails encounter a mysterious flaming mountain and get wrapped up in a plan to defeat the tyrannical Iron Dynasty who set it ablaze, with help from the returning Monkey Con. Yeah. Damn. So, Fire Mountain, another Journey to the West thing. Yeah, it is. I completely forgot about that, actually, and I've read Journey to the West. Man, it's crazy to hear in these comics so many things that are just references to things well, I am not familiar with. This I mean, explains fair, so much. It, it does make sense with Monkey Kong because he is just Sun Wukong. Yeah. No, um, yes, but... but I, I know what you mean, though. Here's something that doesn't make sense. Where the hell is the plane? Um, they just start out with Tails carrying Sonic across the landscape. They ran out of fuel. I have a suspicion that maybe some of these stories were bank stories written before Sonic and Tails left, and they just mm. altered some dialogue to make him fit. I mean, probably. Huh. That makes sense. That doesn't probably... explain how Monkey Con is here. Oh, no, it doesn't. But, I mean, I, I think what it explains of, oh, didn't Sonic and Tails run across Fire Mountain and or run across new villain they have to protect a uh, village from. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, that okay. part makes sense for a bank story, and then you just fill in the blanks with, "Oh, Monkey sure. Con's there with Flaming Mountain, uh, Journey to the West." Reference. Okay, so they did adjust <laughs> it a little bit more than just changing some dialogue, but it's still right. not much. Yeah, I guess that's possible. Yeah, so they're they are asked for help by these uh, these people. Uh, one is a fox girl named Lee Moon. And the other, the other guy is a lion guy whose name is Lee Yun, which is a joke because that sounds like lion. Um, wow. Wow, look at how much I'm laughing. And uh, they, they tell him about the Iron Queen, who is a, a vicious dictator woman and scary and stuff. Who we've never heard of until now. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I, I surely will uh, be into this new villain they are building up so masterfully. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Um, this new villain you will be into me. that villain in approximately ten years, but uh, huh? uh oh, okay, nice. Oh, okay. Suddenly, my appreciation okay. has increased by twenty percent. I can just say that Ian Flynn will bring a thing back, and that'll instantly make you guys pay better attention because you know it'll be <laughs> in a better story. Right. <laughs> I do like uh, how the the people are talking to, to Sonic, and they're like, "You can't just challenge the Iron King." That's uh, that's not brave. That's stupid. And he's like, luckily, I can't tell the difference. Let's go, Tails. At least he's honest. Actually, I like I like Tails here because he, he does the why don't they just sell their houses and move thing when they complain about the, the flaming mountain, which is like, you can't, you know, it's not just it's not practical. Is that oh, your is house actually fitting hell. of like. Uh, a younger uh, kid, though, yeah, that a little kid just be like, oh, there, there's a problem. Just leave. Well, yeah, I, mean, I expect it from Tails because he's yeah. he's not well, a no, political commentator hilarious. in his thirties, but um, that's fucking hilarious. Yes, so they they go off, and uh, the the Iron Queen is spooky looking. She has scary eyes. She has a staff with a orb. Yeah, no, she she has no personality. She's just evil. Um. She has a big old husband lurking in the shadows. He's an ox. He's an ox king. Uh -huh. um, it's the ox king. Yes, that's that's another journey. Yeah, anyway. Um, but they encounter Monkey Con, who is being <laughs> mind-controlled, and that's that's where the, the crown mind-control thing comes in from Journey to the West. There uh, we go. Right. Um, well, technically, in Journey to the West, that wasn't the ox king who did that. No, but who cares? Um, I mean, yeah. I, to be honest, I really doubt anyone who would have worked on these comics in the 90s had read Journey to the West. The closest might have been watching Dragon Ball. I, I'm surprised that Frank Strum did, frankly. So I guess now with this comic, um, Monkey Con is a new recurring rival for Sonic because he's just going to be, for random plot reasons, made to fight Sonic. Right. Uh, again, even though they were left as friends last time. Um, Sonic luckily is like, wait a minute, this, is, this isn't this is right. And he, So he's not going to go full ham against Monkey Con. Right. Uh, but he's yeah. like... Figure out a way to help him. But it's funny, because he's talking with Tails, and he's like, 
Tails something Mondo uncool is going on here, and then Tails is just like, yeah, Sonic, a bloodthirsty lunatic is trying to murder us. Yeah. Who could have thought? Excuse you, he's a harmless psycho, not a murderer. What does that even mean? <laughs> this is some A-plus dialogue here. The thing is, it's like, they're fighting him, but they're sort of, you know, they're, they're doing their back and forths. You know, you, it looks like he's about to, to beat Sonic at one point. The Iron Queen just reveals herself for no reason, and then Tails easily breaks the mind control. So, yeah, it, it, it becomes clear pretty quickly uh, that the Iron Queen is just, like, silly. <laughs> they, they played her up briefly, but she's a Saturday morning cartoon villain. Yeah, basically. Neither her nor the Iron King, after she runs away and she, they chase her back to the, the big house, neither of them are particularly threatening. Uh, I will say, I do appreciate, uh, they tied it back to something that I can um, give them points for continuity-wise, that um, her staff at least ha has uh, power rings in it. That's cool. Right. I mean, yeah, that is that's pretty cool. And that makes sense how it could interact with the crown, since that was a ring, is a ring, however that works. Yeah, I don't know how that works, but yeah, it's true. But the the fight against the Iron King is extremely, extremely quick. They they bop him a couple, actually, I don't even know if they bop him a single time before uh, Tails just oh grabs the uh, the Bancho fan and, and they hit him with it and it just blows him out the window. Yes, where you have yeah. the big super powerful relic. Uh, and you're terrible at guarding it, and then you, they just grab it and use it to beat you. See, I, I like how in Dragon Ball they had to think of a different solution than the Bancho fan because because Roshi spilled juice on it and threw it out. Um, but in this case, yeah, no, it just it just they they use it exactly as intended. Iron Queen yep. comes back for like one second, and then they put out the fire, and she's like, "Shit, okay, bye." You have any last words? Says Sonic to her. Yes, curses foiled again. I won't rest until I have my revenge. Until then, look for me in your nightmares. Well, like I said, this is a lot like Adventure Song the Hedgehog, actually. Yeah. She she should have teamed up with, with that version of Robotnik. That would have been fun. Mm. Oh, yeah, like like Catella. That fits. God. Um, yeah, so they win. The two characters from the start, whose names I don't even remember now, come back. And they're like, thank you, you did it. And uh, in the final panel, Sonic and the girls' heads are drawn really abnormally large. <laughs> yeah, n n nothing nothing new here, really. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, despite this story having direct plot relevance, kind of, because at least they're looking for Ixis Nogus, but he's not here at all. There's not even a trace of him. Um, I, I find this less interesting uh, than the previous issue. I mean, that 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 is honestly fair. Yeah, it you know, in the context of its original writing, it doesn't it doesn't really do much. It establishes that Khan has a, a place to call home at the end here. He decides to stay here because. There's a prophecy about a great monkey king, which makes me wonder if Journey to the West literally exists in universe. Um, oh, I missed that. That yeah, there? Huh. interesting. Yeah. Um, but you know, regardless of what Flynn does decades after this, you know these characters. I don't think ever Khan does, but the the rest of these characters mostly don't show up again. I think under Strom's watch. Uh, maybe, maybe the girl and the, the lion guy do, but I don't think the Iron King and Queen do. Hmm. I'm not really that surprised. Didn't yeah. expect them to. So, yeah. kind of a, kind of a nothing story. Um. Oh, well. And I, I, I was doing a deliberate misdirect last time you laughed and, you know, it, it ruined the surprise, but we do have a second story in this issue. Um, holy Buckle fuck. up! This is The Ultimatum, written by Penders and drawn by Gallen, wherein King Max has a stern chat with Sally about her future as the Acorn Monarch. Way to <sighs> understate it. So, to start off, Max is like, 
Why have you guys been questioning my judgment ever since I lost my fucking mind and ordered a genocide? So... I was right. I was completely right when I said that it was not Nagus. It was actually, yeah, the king himself uh, ordering that the Robians be all murdered. Uh, Here's the thing. Because otherwise he would not use that as an example um, of them disobeying his orders. He should not be annoyed with that unless he actually did believe that. I'm not even sure that he was, like, insane. I feel like he only changed his mind because he decided, you know, it's not worth the effort. Everyone's going against me. Fine. Here's the thing. I'll, I'll yeah, let got, them stay as long as they stay back. away in their, their slums, in, you know, um, not whole village, away from my eyes. Just saying. It really comes off that way. Here's the thing. I think that Penders did not have a full grasp of what Ballers was doing. I think Ballers never intended for the king to be a complete maniac. I think he intended for him to be questionable, but I don't think he intended for him to be a complete psycho. I think right. Penders maybe didn't even read that story and just got a summary of it or read it and didn't understand it, because I think Penders just thought, oh yeah, he ordered genocide, that's, that's fine. I think he just didn't even consider the idea that that wasn't what he wanted, you know, in, in his heart or whatever. It, it, he is, <sighs> Penders' version of Max, like, Ballers is, again, questionable. Penders' version is just a callous, legacy-obsessed prick who keeps giant secrets from his family and is just generally unlikable. Uh, so he's basically the same as Locke. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna say it here. Mm. It becomes clearer because this train wreck is still going later in the com. We're on the first page. Uh, but yeah. It's, it's sad to say it, but this story made it click in my head that, yeah, King Acorn is just an out-of-touch old man. Uh, he's nothing like what he seemed he might be. He seemed like a noble king in Side AM, and even maybe at the start in these comics. Uh, but, but no, sadly, you never meet your heroes, I guess. This man could never be Tim Curry. Um, so, yeah... He shows Sally the big pool of molten gold and silver from the uh, the backstory thing, and he's like, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna take a take a dip in this sometime, but not now." Um, Sally's like, "Oh yeah, this this is weird, but sure, sounds good." Yeah. What does not sound good is that he's like, "Oh, you need a good king to sit by your side as queen." <sighs> and, you know, he's like, she, you, you need a king, and Sally's like, I don't know if Sonic is up to that, and then he's like, I did say nothing, fucking nothing about Sonic the Hedgehog. And he rants about how great arranged marriages are, and then says, you have to marry Antoine. Like I said, out of touch. I think everyone knows, including Antoine, uh, that... That would never work. Antoine is dating Bunny. Yeah. They're happy. Well, yeah. yeah, he's over it anyway. That's true. But I think, yeah. you know, even even if you ask him before, he he, I don't know. Oh, I don't think my, Antoine my point would is have been he's ultra out of touch. Well, I I don't think Antoine would have been interested in the first place if um if it was arranged. Right. Yeah, I. They have all this forced melodrama, and maybe the art is part of this. Maybe not. My, the thing that gets me, the thing that absolutely grinds my balls is the way that they present to Max, the way that they show all of the things that he's talking about. They have the flashback, they have the narration boxes, they have his smug prick expression while Sally huffs off with steam coming out her ears. It feels like, maybe not entirely, but at least a little bit, the comic is taking Max's side, which is just Ooh. fucked up to me. I yeah. find that difficult to believe. I think he's just painted that way because he's the regal monarch that everyone listens to, um, and he's, he's got self-importance. Um, I, I find that very difficult to believe. I don't know. Maybe it's that I'm so used to the comic like retroactively justifying shit with Locke that I'm just sort of projecting that, but I don't know. I don't think it's 100% the same situation with Locke as with Max. 
Yeah. Um, yes. So, yeah, what a fucking story that is. Well, the, the thing that really gets me, I don't remember, and I pray this isn't the case, but the way it ends, so Sally's like, stop, no, don't be an idiot, I'm not going to do this, and then the king is like, well, then I'll put you in your place, I'll strip you, strip you of your title, and you can just go away, uh, you lose everything, be that way, huh. well she's really going to be that way. I have to see if my other option is still available next, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, the way that is presented, that is very funny. I don't think... No, that's referencing something else, but it does look pretty bad there, doesn't it? I can't, I feel like that had to be on purpose. It, it sure looks that way. Oh, that would be... That uh, is that is a uh, hilarious implication that like oh what if I make Jeffrey the king? <laughs> terrible. Uh, you, you anyway, just, you just adopt him. It's easy enough. <sighs> easy. Uh, okay, so if nothing else, I can at least give this uh, story one thing, which is that finally, uh, you know, Penders' scattered piece by piece story isn't boring anymore. It's a roller coaster of bad times. <laughs> yeah, I guess soap opera. I guess if it pisses me the hell off, I can't say I'm bored. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <sighs> true. Well, we can cool off from that upset by taking a nice, refreshing look at. Oh my God, what the hell is that? They have very large heads. Sonic Kids, the Sonic Super Special with the bulbous, bulbous child heads. Yeah. And Sally with limbs that are even, even more skinny. You can snap her in half by the wind. That you re Honestly, yeah. What's up with Tails' is like giant eyebrows? That is odd. Yeah, why does he have eyebrows? Does Tails normally have eyebrows? I don't think so. Huh. Also, isn't Antoine supposed to be, like, older? Whatever. Is um, he? Is he? I thought Maybe. he was supposed to be the same age as, like, all of them. Well, I, I assumed Rotor was the oldest. Official sources can be a little inconsistent, but most of them tend to place Antoine and Bunny as being a little bit older than Sonic, Sally, and the rest. Anyway, let's... <laughs> the the first story here is When You and I Were Young, comma, Sally, written by Gallagher and drawn by Manny Gallen. When a young Tails, still learning to fly, gets lost, the younger versions of the Freedom Fighters set out to save him and bond as a group in the process. So, yeah, I get, they just decided to do a flashback story for some... Well, it's not even a flashback story, actually. It's just a story in the past. I think it is yeah. uh, inspired by the popularity of Muppet Babies. Oh, dear. Oh, oh my. That is a good good, uh, good possibility, yes. Also, so, real quick, I, I thought Tails was supposed to have been born, like, not long before the kid. I think this is after the coup. It it okay. <laughs> is it? <laughs> we'll talk about the timeline. Oh boy. Uh yes, it is Bruce. I figured that out, but I do not blame you at all cuz I was confused initially. Oh, okay. Hey, we've all got right. a, We've got a classic hallmark on the first page here, which is Antoine abuse. We haven't had that in forever. Yeah, it's oh, good yeah, to this... know that it's good to know that Sonic was still a prick to Antoine. Yeah, we're at that um, point. Yeah, too. When he was a kid. Um, also, why is Antoine, like, the only one with normal animal feet? I don't know why I constantly have to look at their feet. Well, it's because Tails' is giant gross human feet are here again after last week. Um, they are. But... Yeah, no, just kids playing. We've got both uh, Rosie and Julela. Yeah, so I am actually incredibly impressed that they remembered to bring back a character that I completely forgot about uh, and don't <laughs> and care about And she's not a cat all. anymore. 
Oh, well, I oh, guess yeah. they lose some points there. Well, no, because but... they're supposed to be cousins, so it makes sense that she would be a woodchuck. I mean, maybe mm. Sally's part cat as okay, well. Okay, fine. That, they'll get a pass on that one. Um, no, she's Rosie's cousin, not Sally's. Oh, right. She's Rosie's cousin. I don't know. These, these genealogies make no fucking sense. True that. But yes, uh, I, I like, because yes, of course she would be around. That was the whole point of the character. So right. the fact that they remembered it, good job. Somebody did their reading. They probably should have drawn her wearing the vest here. That would have that would have also helped since that's who Sally got it from. Um, oh, darn! That's a missed opportunity. But then she I might mean, have just looked way too much like Sally. <laughs> yeah, she just looked like an adult Sally. Anywho, uh, so the the actual plot of this is yeah they're they're just playing around. Tails is like feeling bad or whatever and, and goes off on his own. Uh, no, he flies off by mistake. But whatever, Devin, you stupid idiot. Yeah, there really isn't a whole lot of story here. Um, the the main plot is that, like, they're messing around, and then Sonic's like, "Hey, Tails, what did you spun your tail super fast?" Actually, sorry, "Hey, Miles," because he doesn't have the name Tails yet, um, and spins his tails around. They're oh, you can fly, but he can't control it. Yeah, Man, he can fly, I, but he doesn't know how to stop. I don't, you know, I I don't like the fact that we have to shove Sonic into being the one. To, te to give Tails the idea to fly. You know, I didn't think about that, but that is a shame. You are right. It should have been Tails being like, hey, I have two of Tails, and they can... You know, I could do something with these. Yeah, I... Yeah, no, it should be Tails' idea. Um... Yeah. But yes, Tails... Sorry, I said he... Tails flies off by accident and ends up uh, quite a quite a bit further away and falls into uh, a tree stump, you know, a hollowed out tree stump and into that cave where they, they made their initial knothole base. So, yes, that is true. Um, everyone gathers up and, and they're like, wow, what, what a great little place here. And Sally's like, hey, we should form a group called the Freedom Fighters. And we, ah! um, you know, there's been a lot of weird things going on lately. Like my father disappeared. I will fail to mention the fact that the kingdom literally got overthrown, though. Um, right. This is why I was confused about the timeline. Why yeah, would she same. not talk about that? And the underground caverns should have already been used. You don't have a knot hole without the underground entrance. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it is full of continuity problems. It does not make any sense. I don't know how old Tails is supposed to be, uh, or or Sonic or Antoine, frankly. And the the fact that yeah, it's it's not just the 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 king of God overthrown. You're living in a completely different place. You normally live in a palace. <laughs> you were run out of your home by giant killer robots. Yeah, that does not make yeah. any sense. That's true. Um, on a more minor note, but still, it's a problem. The characters don't really act too much different from their adult selves. Um, Rotor is already a genius. Uh, Sonic right. is kind of silly, but he's already kind of silly. And he gets serious pretty quickly when he needs to. Right. Um, Sally speaks completely like her normal self, which I'll give that one a pass because she is raised differently. So that makes sense. Um, but nonetheless, they don't do a whole lot to differentiate the 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 characters other than with weird appearance. Yeah, this, you frankly could have set this at any point in the timeline, which I guess is why they don't tell you what their ages are. Fair enough. Um, can I just say, I hate the idea of them just grouping up and saying, we're going to be the freedom fighters without like, really having a mission or just an idea, I always assumed that because there is an oppressive authoritarian empire out there, the Freedom Fighters is just what you call yourself because you're a group of Freedom Fighters. It was not right. like, you didn't, you're not a superhero team. I think that is a very fair assumption. I, I yeah, dare that say is. that was the original intention. Instead, yeah. they, they just... Make, make themselves this group with that. I, they don't even mention Robotnik. It, it doesn't make any sense. It it really doesn't. Uh, I don't... And 
until the second story, uh, I really wasn't sure of the timeline. I was like, what is going on here? Um, it's it's odd. I also have to mention, offhandedly, Rotor talks about... Sorry. Boomer talks oh, about... Yeah. Um, yep, they brought that back. <laughs> talks about maybe making a computer named Nicole. So they screwed that up, too, because Nicole's from the future. That that was pretty screwed up. That it does make it worse. True, but I'm just saying anything to make it more contradictory. Well, um, I I'm I'm gonna push forward to the second story, um, yeah. which I I think is a little less offensive. It is stop Sonic Time, which I guess is a more offensive name because I had to read that. Uh, written by Tom Rolson and Carl Ballers and drawn by Art Mawinney. Sonic tells the story of how he got Tails his sneakers, and reveals a larger story about battling Robotnik and his machine which freezes the world in time. Yeah. Um, so this one actually is, well it's not a flashback, but Sonic tells the story of the past, so this makes slightly no, more sense. I, it huh? is a flashback, because the moment in the present is still a flashback, because Sonic shouldn't be home at Knothole right now. Right. Gosh darn it, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, wait, we're reading this out of order. Maybe this is before they fucking leave. I don't know. Uh <laughs> Very confusing. Um, but, but yeah, uh, the, the Sonic kids are still here. We're still with them. They look kind of older. I don't know. Maybe that's just the way they're drawn. Um, but it, it, it kind of seems like that to me, at least. Yeah, um, Mawini is definitely better suited to drawing them quote-unquote young than, uh, yeah. than Gallon was. Yeah. Sally is green. Yeah, why is she not green? Or why is her outfit not green? It's the same know. outfit, but yeah. I don't know. It's kind of cool to have them have different outfits, uh, colored outfits, whatever. Ro Boomer, Rotor, I don't remember. I don't know what his name is at this point. Um, has a yellow outfit, too. Um, yeah. But anyway, Tails has, has like done good job on his report card, which, let me just say, I find it strange that they have like a school system with report cards in Knothole Village. Um. I don't know if they could really do that. Like, wouldn't they be more focused on survival and stuff? I don't know, you know, what the village I mean, was operating like between the coup and the actual, you know, sort of war on Robotnik. I guess to, maybe to Robotnik isn't fair, in World War yet. To be fair, we've talked about how the, the Freedom Fighters spend a lot of time just kind of fucking around. True. It's another he, cult. Even, God damn it. Um, but, uh, so, Sonic wants to make it really special for Tails and give him rewards. So, he goes to Robotropolis and meets up with Miles, not Miles, Merlin Prower again. Whoa, I didn't expect to see him again. What plans do they have for him in this story? Nothing. Yeah, he's just giving, t giving Sonic a little present for his little uh, nephew. Well, it's a really weird thing, because it's kind of not a present, because he charges Sonic a bag of rocks for it. I mean, I mean maybe he's got rocks on the brain. No, because, I, like, I assume it's like, I can't just give these to him. Maybe that would reveal his identity? That's, and so that's he has to be idea. like he's selling him? Reveal his identity? Well, yeah, because he does just toss the rocks off to the side. But also, reveals identity. I don't think anyone knows Tails even has an uncle. Listen, if you look the same as someone in these comics, you're definitely related. Well, I mean, yeah, but I, to be perfectly, <laughs> to be 100% honest, I don't really in expect most of the characters to be intelligent enough to notice that. Maybe. Anyway, after that confusing scene, um, we get on to the good stuff. So maybe I just miss him, but it is good to see Robotnik again. Um, yeah, and is. let me just say, this story has huge Sad AM vibes. Um, it does. It has a really dark tone. Robotnik is characterized completely seriously throughout, and he creates this honestly pretty terrifying weapon 
that freezes everyone, isolates Sonic on their own. They're the only one who gets to be able to move and has to save everything. The pressure is on. Um, and they even brought back, like, Cluck, too? So, like, I feel like that's what they were going for. Yeah, it is a much yeah. more, like, action-packed story, which is weird for it being, you know, small, small bab Sonic. Um, but yeah, Robotnik is just, like, his good villain self, and holy crap, I have missed this man. Yes. Good to have him back, at least for this story. He and Snively are, are both refer to Mobians as furries here, also. Um, yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> that is strange. <laughs> in 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 the mid to late nineties, that that had to have been a more maybe not maybe not. No, furry community's been fairly well known. The internet. I guess the question is not whether it was well known, but whether these specific writers knew it and. Maybe not. I don't know. Because Ballers is just, you know, like a normal comic book writer most of the time. Right. Um, and I don't know anything about Tom Rolson. But anyway. So, yeah, we, we get some good back and forth between Snively and Robotnik. Um, Robotnik being like, yeah, I can't even trust you right now. You have to prove yourself. Uh, which is interesting. Which makes me think that Snively really did play the long game here, trying to... Um, get Robotnik to let his guard down over many, many years. Um, right. So that's neat. Uh, but then they fire the weapon, and, and suddenly everyone gets frozen, and Sonic's like, what's going on? Yeah, everybody gets frozen in time. Sonic, uh... It's funny the way he just runs past Tails while holding the shoes he was trying to give to him, but I guess he's confident that he can do it later. Yes, yes, I suppose so. Uh, he, he, he He's very... As I said, very much his present self. Uh, he's like, oh, wow. Like, all this is happening, but psh, I got it. I can do this. Yeah. Um, so Sonic basically lets himself get kidnapped by pretending to be frozen in time. Which you have to be really good at pretending to sell that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I find it strange that somehow Robotnik already knows and hates Sonic. At this point, I that doesn't make sense to me. I feel like they only did that just so they could have the dynamic of, of you know, Robotnik hates Sonic. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> this is another thing where it's like, you know, this feels like it can't have been that long after the other story, but it feels much more like the characters were already acting as the Freedom Fighters by this point. But, you know, it's like, what, what I, what I would have liked is, you know, if... You know, maybe he'd seen Sonic once or twice before, but didn't have a really, you know, that relationship to him. And was just like, oh, it's Chuck's boy. Why has he been such a pain in the dick? That that would have been more fitting, yeah. Um, instead, they decide to develop something else, you know, this late in the game, which is strange, um, by presenting that, first of all, apparently, early on, Robotnik ruled underground style. Sonic Underground, that is, uh, in that he let people, you know, if they followed his rules, um, be spared from robotization. But right. then he's like, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm just going to turn you all into robots, um, which is interesting, I guess. But that was not hinted at at all. So I don't know why they threw that in. Um, and then the other thing is that he's like, oh, and I'm going to uh, enslave the entire planet and then take over the galaxy. Like, hmm. He actually never, he had a few space projects, but not with the goal of going out and conquering. Yeah, um, I think, I think the thing about, you know, if you follow my rules, but I've changed my mind, I think that's probably to explain how they managed to grow up after the coup without him ever, you know, whatever, which, you know, not whole is a hidden village, that's all you really needed, but fine. Um, oh, really? Because at the beginning... He's like, oh, God, those, those freedom fighters led by the princess. Like, he knows they're there, and he doesn't like them. So he's not sparing them. Well, that's right. what I'm saying, is that maybe this was a, a more re recent change on, on the freedom fighters part. I don't know. Okay. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, hmm. It's not Strange. It's not slick either way. Um, and the, the galaxy space empire, that definitely never happened. 
Um, but in any case, Sonic just... Well, he just stops pretending, and he does a little bit of physical violence against Robotnik, you know, classic. Presses buttons on all the machines. It's, you know, the usual Sonic fare. Right. Yep. Um, is this, you know, it's like, is this supposed to be the first time Sonic ever defeated Robotnik? I don't know. No, Probably because not. he already knows him. It would make right. a lot more sense if it was, though. Yeah. It really would. Although it wouldn't make sense of why he personally chose Sonic to be his trophy. Whatever. I'm saying how he just kind of rushes around, presses his buttons, and saves the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, he gets back, uh, hands off hands off the shoes to, to Tails, and there's this very funny uh, bit on, on the bottom of page 15 here where you can see Tails put on the shoes and they just magically manifest the cuffs in the next panel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, that's a nice catch. You know, I which... Lo I loved in that frame also he's like staring at the camera with this look like, yeah, yeah, you didn't see me put the socks on, did you? Anyway, so Sonic told that whole story and all of the kids fell asleep and that's a joke. Um, but I do Sonic like the... Sonic a bunch of children. <laughs> Uh, I do like the final panel where Sonic turns to the camera and says, Well, I thought my story was pretty exciting, didn't you? And it's uh, like, don't be an asshole. Not that much. It was fine. Nothing special, it was, though. It was kind of, it was fun, but, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't Again, the best I, maybe I just miss uh, the, uh, the well, Robotnik yeah, in the Robotnik, good old days. Yeah, Robotnik well. being part of it. But, made it better. but I I, re I really enjoyed that story. I was surprised actually. Oh no, it wasn't bad. like that in the middle of this. Uh, otherwise, what special? Um, yeah. Continuity it doesn't fit at all. It shouldn't be the them as kids, but it was clear they were just writing. You know, uh, one one of the one of the nice, uh, almost sad am like like I said, uh, stories from the past, and I think they did a great job for that. It is it is perfectly serviceable. I don't I don't hate yeah, anything about this. There's nothing awful about it. Um, and this special actually has one final story, which is a bit of a doozy, a bit of a weird one that is called Total Regenesis, which is written by Ballers and drawn by Manny Gallen, looking a little weird on the first page here. Um, Sonic, Sally, and Antoine tell Uncle Chuck a Rashomon-style recount of their encounter with a reactivated Combot. I don't understand what they were going for in this special. They just threw random stuff together. Um, some of it's good, some of it's weird. I, I don't know what's going on in this one. Also, uh, that's not Manny Gallon. I think that's Nelson Ortega, but whatever. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really, really weird. Um, Nelson Rebiro. I don't know that one. There's too many Nelsons. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's like they each give their own account that each has its own different tone and, you know, right. stars them as the hero. Right. Yeah, if if no one has any comments on the Sally bit, I'm just going to skip straight to the Antoine bit because it is incredible. I love it. It's so <laughs> over the top. It's just an awesome sword fight. It's like, Antoine's even able to fence with this combat when it's invisible like incredible i love it i wish this one were actually true yeah honestly yeah they each get progressively like sillier from the last one especially I, I don't i think it's been here for a couple issues now but in sonic's story we start to see the further emergence of his catchphrase hasta la vista mista that's a catchphrase? I didn't even think much of that. Yeah. It was You're going to start noticing it now that I've pointed it out, and it's one of the weirdest ones Sonic has ever had. And it usually is exclusively Ballers who gives it to him. Okay. Uh -huh. well, good to know, I guess. Interesting. But yeah, this story is, is bizarre. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, it has like a bunch of different artists. So it has Nelson Viro, then Art Mawinney draws Sally's section... Uh, Sam Maxwell, I think, is drawing Antoine's. You can tell because of the weird perspectives. And I don't know who the hell's drawing Sonic's. It doesn't look like anybody that we're normally used to. Um, 
Uh, I guess that's kind of neat. I do like when they kind of when they throw different artists, that not is, not I'm you know sort of nonsensically, but in actually right. divvied up parts. Right. Yeah. Um. But the the truth ends up being kind of none of those things. Or all of the above, the, the, depending on the way you look at it. So, I, I know it's for the story, but still, why did they all lie? Especially Sally, I would expect her, at least, to just come clean. But no, they all are just like, oh, I did it myself. Even though they could have just oh, said work I, as a team, which I mean, be pretty good. I thought it was like none of them fully remembered what happened. Oh. <laughs> they got, I it they was. all got concussions at the same time. I, I mean, know, I, I, I kind of thought that's right. what it was. You like, could be right, actually. Like, because... the, like, they're all just assuming, like, they all woke up and the, the combat was already destroyed. Yeah, so they all start, assume that they did it. They kind of look beat up. So, yeah, it's possible. And then Uncle Chuck is like, guys, you work together. This is a good thing. Be proud of it. Okay, well, that makes sense, I suppose. Yep. yep. And uh, no, that's that's it. That's the that's the end. that's the end of the special. Just, just like that. Yeah, it is a bit a bit of a weird special. I mean, I I guess on on almost every aspect, it's better than the Image Comic special tonight. I mean, yeah. But I don't know how it, hard. Yeah. I don't know how it ranks against the other ones, mostly because I don't remember what the other ones are. Um, yeah, I think that's been the problem with um, trying to rank these specials. We we barely remember most of them. All right, I'm I'm putting a moratorium on ranking the specials here. We'll just do like a tier list after we're done. Is what we'll do. Uh, that'll be even worse because we yeah, won't remember any idea. of them. Yeah, but I'll be able to check beforehand. Oh. I guess yeah. Oh, you can give us like a general synopsis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's actually not a bad idea. And speaking of general synopses, I forgot to write one for our final bonus story of tonight. Because, uh, way back in the 1990s, um, there was a fella by the name of Michael Gallagher and another one by the name of Dave Monick, who wrote some Sonic comics sometimes. And, uh, one time they wrote and penciled an entire story... Uh, as a follow-up to a previous one that did not ever see the light of the day in regular printing. And so, uh, Sonic Archives Volume 5 decided to just remaster it and, and slip it in the back there. So, yeah, I know the story is nothing special, spoilers, but um, that that is awesome. I, 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 that is really cool that they did that, I just have to say. It is pretty cool. It's, yeah, it's it's a nice novelty, I think so. Um, this is Everything Old is Newt Again, written by Gallagher and drawn by Monarch way back in 1993 or 4 or something like that, um, which features the return of the Universe Salamander, that, that early villain, villain. Uh, that I remember mostly just because it was the first time that Super Sonic ever appeared in any of these issues. Right, yes. Was it? it? Yeah. Um. Oh shit! Supersonic is is very weird in these comics. They, they never I mean, show. Yeah, well, okay. Is. They usually don't show up for really big things where you would expect them to. Yeah. They, just, they just kind of show up a few times he at really, random. For the most it really part. does. But uh. not in this story. Um, so how will Sonic beat Universe Salamander this time? Well, you'll just have to see. Uh, so, well, yeah. We we open on a, on a very hilarious, strange scene, because one of the things that we consistently joked about when reviewing the early comics was that Robotnik never tries the same plan twice, even when it would theoretically work. Right. And here he does the same plan twice. And it still doesn't work. He does actually change it up a little bit. Um, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so let me just say, I know this is early comics, so it, I probably shouldn't be overthinking it, but I am obligated to anyway. Um, <laughs> Robotnik is like, ah, gosh, that darn Sonic. I really hate him. And he's like, anyone got any ideas? And then the Salamander pops up, 
who survives somehow. And he's like, hey, let me let me at him. And Robotnik, without thinking twice, is like, sure. I will not think about how you betrayed me last time. Um, <laughs> yes, do that again. It will, this will only end well for me. Of course. What, what, and, and A, he's not a robot, but who? when did he get to eat roboticized? When did that happen? And B, why does he want to do this? Because he did it before because he was roboticized. Um, yes. Yeah. Those are also good points. What is this fucking I, lizard's motivation? He just really wants to kill someone. I've been known to use that that line at political uh, debates. Um, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, the, 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 we start off with kind of a, a silly scene at first with the Freedom Fighters. The Designated leisure football. activity. Yep. Yeah. And then Sonic beats them all because, of course, he does. And he makes a fool of Antoine. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't miss that part. But uh, then Universe Salamander comes in and just promptly gets rid of Sonic. He knows who's the real threat. Yeah. You can tell that this issue wasn't fully colored until a decade and a half after the fact. Both because the colors look totally different from the old comics and by the fact that they actually made Tails orange. Oh, true. True, yeah. Also... Sally gets this weird, like, sort of brick red coloring that's sort of halfway between her brown and pink looks. Yeah, that is... that's odd. You know, we've been getting a lot of stuff that, albeit doesn't have amazing art, but looks a lot nicer than these early comics. It's weird going back to to uh, Monarch's art. I guess it does put it in perspective a little bit. Um, yeah, it it looks it feels like a, it feels like a different comic. Well, so I I was reading this and I was getting I was getting that vibe and I couldn't figure out what I was thinking of and then I realized it reminds me of the One Punch Man web comic. You know, ignoring the fact that that's actually oh, good. Yeah, for, versus Yusuke Murata's manga, yeah. Right. One Punch Man is at least always a comedy series though, so it's like right. fine. It uses the Kind of, it, it, um, one used the, uh, kind of poopy art to his advantage. Yeah. Um, so. so uh, I guess, I, I didn't try to place the continuity here because I didn't want to have to read back and Fair find enough. exactly, but this isn't too long after Bunny joined the team, uh, because they make a big deal about how, oh, She's say the hello new to member. Her. Yeah, and then she whacks him in the face. Awesome. Cool. Um, uh, before getting hit away a second later. Then we Damn. have uh, a really weird moment where Sonic is lost in the desert and talks to an ant to find his way back. Mm, Archimedes! Fire ant. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is very funny how... Because that, you know, it's like it makes you think of the Knuckles miniseries where he gets teleported to the desert with, with an ant. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. So, yeah. So we, we learned that the gimmick here is that because Universe Salamander was defeated by a Shrink Ray at first, uh, Robotnik just said, oh, well, I'll just make it so that uh, Shrink Rays will increase his size. This leads to my favorite part of the entire comic, where we get some top-tier gobbledygook from Robotnik. He says, you see, I reverse <laughs> magnetize the energy fields by using antimatter compounds. It doubles the ion flux patterns yeah. and voila, FX flip. It's total bullshit. Re reverse the polarity the of the neutron flow. Where it goes into FX flip like it's some sort of medicine. It's like FX flip. Makes no guarantee your field will reverse. Only your doctor can be sure FX flip is right for you. The font that's written in, it looks like that, you know, was done digitally. So I have to wonder, what did that uh, say originally, I wonder? I Part of me wants to say it wasn't even there originally. That part might have not been completed. Or they just added it in. Right. It's interesting to imagine that as being the sole joke that they added in after the fact in the archives version. But in any case, uh, Sonic gets back from his uh, desert pilgrimage... But he doesn't really affect much here. I mean, he, he bops it a couple times. He does but... save them all, actually. They're, like, about to be crushed, and then he slices it away. 
I suppose, yeah. But it's it's really Rotor who's going to be the hero here. There's one thing we have to talk about beforehand, though. Oh, boy. It's a certain computer. <laughs> so, uh, Rotor and Sally go down to develop, you know, something else to defeat the thing. Because the, the enlarger ray will do it, but it got broken. And yeah. Sally's like, I know what can help you. And so, Nicole makes what would have been her first appearance in this story. And it's not Sally... just Nicole. Nicole 7000. Real. <laughs> Sally just ordered it through the mail. I love how it's just that simple. They just <laughs> ordered Nicole in the mail. You know. This contrasts so sharply with what Nicole's origin story was originally in these comics. Yeah. And it's gonna take 15 years for the sad AM explanation to ever have any relevance. This is great. We uh. either get what we got or we get this and nothing in between. So I am curious, is this considered canon? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, th this, this part very well makes it impossible well yeah i know this part definitely makes it not non-canon but i was curious if it was it would be considered canon anyway. i guess it wouldn't be because it wasn't it was it wasn't a re released when it was supposed to be well and it's like you know i was gonna ask like what's what's worse pendas's nonsense you know timey-wimey explanation or gallagher's silly bullshit uh cop-out explanation and it's like, Honestly, I, I don't think you can even compare them. They're both too stupid to live. They are, but I'd rather have the stupid time travel than... Really? Stupid. Yeah, well, I Well, I know. guess we've got all fields, then, because I'd rather this one. I don't um, know. Because I, I, I think this one's easier to fix later. It is. and but So my problem is, is, even as someone who hates time travel generally, I still feel like it's a more interesting story, uh, um, you know, explanation. Well, with this one, it's, you know, hey, here's Nicole. Bye, Nicole. That's it. You know, she gets one panel, which... Okay, yeah, two, that's but... not technically true, actually. We'll get to her again one. later. Do we? Okay, oh, technically yeah. three. You're right, three. Uh -uh. Um, well, we'll get oh, there. yeah, that's true. That's uh, you're true. right, though, that she doesn't have much inclusion. I assume she would have included more later if they had actually printed this. Right. And yeah. used this Nicole 7000. So, um... Yeah, Robotnik swapped the reduced enlarge effect, so the plan is to just build a new enlarger. And they Spirit. they kind of act like like Rotor pulled a, a clever gambit by making an enlarger that looks like a reducer, but it's just a ray gun. They look the same. <laughs> yeah, there's he's like, I deliberately mislabeled it. There's no label that you can see, though. Um, How are you even supposed to know what it is? Y yeah, uh... The, the the really weird bit here, though, is not that. It's what happens next. Uh, Universe Salamander. Okay, first of all, is it just me? Are they just drawing it wrong? Or does it look like he gets de-roboticized at it the does. same time? Okay, not just me. The, the second thing, though, is that they shrink away to nothingness. And yeah. Rudder's like, oh, I guess FX Flip didn't have a good braking system. But then everyone's like, wow, wow that's heavy, man. <laughs> I didn't expect that ending. And then Nicole's like, yes, things are about to get really serious, guys. And so I was like, nah, it was up for oh, a chili dog. This is, this is like one of the most deliciously ironic things. And it comes from a comic that didn't get printed is, is where Nicole's like, the world is going to get more serious and complex. It's going to become dark and gritty. And Sonic's like, Haha, no, it's like. <laughs> Did he, what did he see? What did Michael Gallagher see? It makes me wonder what would have happened if we had gone from here. Probably not all that much, but something would have come out of this, I assume. I mean, yeah, probably not, but... Some convoluted arc or other. Yeah. Um, well, maybe, no, because it's Gallagher, Nicole so was... I think nothing. Uh, okay, don't rain on my parade. I was going to say, <laughs> maybe Nicole is hinting that uh, they, there is something more to maybe themselves. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, you know, things are more complicated than they seem. I seem to be just ordered in the mail, but 
maybe that was like, you know, some sort of setup or something. And really they were going to go into more of the Saturday AM origins. Um, you know, like that's just what Sally thought, but maybe it was, you know, somehow slipped in as like a something set up way in advance by their father or something. I don't know. I'm just theorizing weirdly here, but I, I could see things where that, that this would lead off into. It definitely would not, but you know, <laughs> I'm not even sure Gallagher watched that. I am. <laughs> well, they somehow brought in Nicole. Well, yeah, because it's a character. You can say we have these characters, but Nicole doesn't look anything like she does the set. Whatever. Okay. Um, okay. Fair enough. So, yeah, we we end with with Robotnik being being angry at his his victory party for nothing because it didn't work. Um, I don't know. I guess this story was was kind of a, a silly, fun throwback, and the ways that it contradicted and ironically like. It's like an anti-prediction of the rest of the series because it's a joke and also it didn't come out. Um, but it also kind of serves as a good reminder that Penders is throwing a lot of bullshit at us, but he is still trying to tell a story. Yeah. And no matter, no matter how hard he tries, it doesn't feel... It's never felt like Michael Gallagher is telling as much of a story. That's... I guess that's a fair point true enough but yeah no it was it was a fun little thing wasn't it yeah yeah I, I i do like going back and looking at something here again um there really isn't a whole lot to say overall uh i'm, I'm spinning in circles i'm trying to yeah i'm like sonic in the desert running in circles somehow that gets him out by the way that's that's a <laughs> navigational method just run in circles over and over. I, I guess if you run as fast as he does, it's not as big, and it, it's no, it's dumb. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm glad they. I'm glad they did print it. It's a cool uh, little glimpse. Yeah. In, uh, into what was you know lost media before, um, but yeah, it's it's just any old random story, nothing special. It really is. Well, that's okay. Mo most of this episode was nothing special, and the one thing that was really special was not special in the way it should have been. <laughs> um, on. But with all that said, we are going to be done for tonight, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was a good time because and and it's you know especially prescient because next time on Deep Dive Zone, drugs. <laughs> Look forward to that, I guess. Oh boy, drugs. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you'd like to share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the video, that would be wonderful. And you can contact us with questions, comments, or feedback at twitter.com slash deepdivezone or at deepdivezonepod at gmail.com. And now, also, cohost.org slash shaddy and at shaddy the guy at mastodon.world and also tiktok.com slash deepdivezone. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. I'll probably not read out every single place like that next time, but it was kind of funny this time. Have a great night. Take care.